These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. Let's review. What's the general name for this type of functional group? Uh, it's an aldehyde. Right. And how about this functional group? A ketone. How about this functional group? Um, a carboxylic acid. That's right. Well, this is what we've talked about in the past, and this is the main thing we'll focus on today, carboxylic acids. All of these functional groups look somewhat similar because they all have carbon-oxygen double bonds. There's a special name for just the portion, which is the carbon-oxygen double bond. What do we call that? Uh, carbonyl. Right. So carbonyl is not really the name of a full-fledged functional group. It's a component of these other types of functional groups. It wouldn't be too helpful to say, aha, this is a carbonyl-containing compound. It's more useful to say, aha, this is a carboxylic acid. So a carboxylic acid is when we have a carbonyl connected to a hydroxy group, and then this over here is either a hydrogen or a carbon chain. Incidentally, this is kind of a trick question. Do you know what type of functional group this is? Um, it's a, it's a deprotonized carboxylic acid. Close. It's actually just a normalized. Or, or this is a normal one. Okay, I'm sorry. That's right. Yeah, but you can see that it still has the proton. That's the, the trick question. COOH is just a condensed way of writing this. That's important to, 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 to review because oftentimes you, you won't see the full structure drawn out. You'll just see it in condensed notation. So this is just a condensed notation for this. Okay. It's important that when we see this condensed notation, we realize that these two oxygens are not symmetric. One of the oxygens is part of the carbonyl, okay. and the other oxygen is part of the hydroxy group. And here's another trick question. What type of functional group is this? Well, this is an even more condensed notation for this. So all of these, these are all ways that you might see carboxylic acids written. So we need to be able to recognize all of these as ways of writing carboxylic acids. Again, these two oxygens are not actually symmetric. One of the oxygens is part of the carbonyl, and the other oxygen is part of the hydroxy group. So you said you finished the, the video on uh, carboxylic acids and acid derivatives. Is that, uh, the last, is that the last video you had time to look at? Yes. Okay. I so think, I think you have another carboxyl, or two more, and then a nomenclature. That's right. Okay. So I was just going to mention that I guess I'll continue to skip over the nomenclature since there's a video series on that. Uh, but it probably it would be to your benefit to watch that video series on uh, nomenclature. Okay. And that covers ketones and, al and aldehydes and carboxyl uh, acids. That's right. Yes. <clears throat> because your instructor definitely did spend time in each of these lecture notes going over that nomenclature. What type of functional group is this? A carboxylic acid. That's right. And what type of functional group is this? An alcohol. Right. And I mentioned on that other video series that this is not an alcohol group. An alcohol group is when you have a hydroxy connected to a normal alkane carbon, or at least not a carbonyl carbon. So even though this looks like an alcohol, it's not. It's a carboxylic acid. Well, then which of these functional groups is more acidic? The carboxylic acid or the alcohol? Uh, carboxylic acid. 
That's right, as I mentioned on the other video series, that's why these are called carboxylic acids. But we don't call alcohols acids, we just call them alcohols. Let's review what an acid is. So one of the main things we need to cover here is acid-base chemistry. It's natural when you're covering carboxylic acids to cover acid-base chemistry. We already got an introduction to that in the other video series. Well, let's review what we know about acids. Are acids molecules who want to donate protons or gain protons? Donate protons. Okay, that's very important to be very clear about. So it's good you know that. Acids want to donate protons. So if something is a good acid or more acidic than somebody else, it's more eager to lose a proton. Let's point to the proton that the carboxylic acid wants to lose. Which is the proton that the carboxylic acid wants to lose? That's right. This is the proton that the carboxylic acid wants to lose. So we would say this is the acidic proton. This is the acidic proton. There's plenty of other protons here, right? Each of these carbons has a bunch of hidden hydrogens, but none of them are as acidic as this proton over here. This is the most acidic proton. If this alcohol was going to act like an acid, which proton would it lose? Well, the most acidic proton here is the alcohol proton, although, as we said, it's not nearly as acidic as this one over here. Now, one thing that was covered in the other video series, which is important for us to review, is why are carboxylic acids more acidic than protons? So, can you remember how can we explain why this proton is more acidic than this proton? The uh, acidic proton on a hydroxyl group is uh, the oxygen can better stabilize the negative charge through resonance. And so it's going to be more apt to give up its proton. Good. That's a good explanation. The one thing you left out is, I think you were thinking about the right idea. You were thinking about the right idea, which is to figure out which of these would rather lose the proton, you should imagine what they would look like after they lose the proton. I think that's what you were doing. Let's say this is a base. Let's show the mechanism by which each of these would lose their proton and show what they would look like after they lose the proton. This is, I think this was the mental picture you had in your mind when you were explaining things uh, a couple minutes ago. Mm -hmm. After they lose a proton, these are what the conjugate bases would be. These are what the molecules would look like. Neither of these is that happy because they have negative charges. And nature doesn't like charges. But who is better able to stabilize this negative charge? This negative charge is better stabilized. And could you explain again why is this negative charge the one that's better stabilized? Um. Because through resonance, it can be that electric or the negative charge can be spread. Uh, the electron density is spread more about the molecule than on the uh, exactly or the alcohol. There's another resonance structure that spreads this out. As we were emphasizing in our last session, the theme for this whole term is using resonance in our explanations. Well, here we can use resonance to explain the stabilization for this negative charge. Let's go ahead and use electron pushing arrows to draw the other resonance structure for this compound. Let's use electron pushing arrows to draw the other resonance structure for that compound.
that's good.